Welcome to Power Director Made Simple. I will start out by showing you the very basic parts of Power Director, which are necessary to make a movie. Don't worry right now about adding super special effects or editing manipulations that will confuse beginners. We'll begin by starting up the program in Windows. You can click any Power Director icons that may have been created on your desktop when you install the program. Or from the start menu, you can simply start typing in the name Cyberlink Power Director and it will appear as part of the search in the start button of Windows. Once the correct name appears, click on open. The first time you start up the program, you'll see the small initial menu with some choices. Along the top row are some tutorials for adding some various special effects. For now, just ignore all of these tutorials as they are mostly for advanced users. Take a look at the next choice for the aspect ratio, which should be 16 to 9. It is the default ratio of your finished video to properly fill the screen of your computer, monitor, or TV. Users who take video on their cell phones but don't rotate the phone sideways, they will end up with an aspect ratio of 9 to 16 and that will result in the tall narrow display that will have black bars on the sides of the video in order to fill up the screen. Below that you see some special modes in which you can start power directors such as full mode, storybook mode, slideshow creator, and auto mode. After you've seen this menu for several times you may wish to check the box that says always start in full mode. The program will skip displaying this initial menu and jump right into the full mode of the program. For now, let's continue to keep things simple and click on full mode. Any of the other modes can be reached from within the full mode. This is the basic look of the program when started in full mode. Let's quickly explain some of the important areas of the screen. On the very left are the various rooms available to use to edit our videos. These include the media room, the project room, the title room, the transition room, the effect room, the video overlay room, the particle room, the audio mixing room, and under more options you'll find the voice over room. When you select any room, there will be several menus or sub-choices which will appear in the next column to the right. In the large window to the right, which Cyberlink calls the Media Library, or as I like to refer to it simply as the Resource window, this is the place where all the various files of video and audio will appear that are immediately available to use in the creation of your video. What you are looking at by default are the built-in sample files that come with PowerDirector. If you want, you can remove these built-in sample files by right-clicking on a blank area and select Remove All Unused Content. This does not delete the files, but merely clears them out of the resource area. To the right of that is the large preview window, which will display any files selected in the resource window or any video clip that you have inserted into the timeline at the bottom. It has the normal buttons expected, such as play, stop, and fast forward. Along the bottom of the screen is the timeline itself, which contains your audio and video tracks. Notice that initially, PowerDirector starts with three sets of tracks, each containing a video track as well as an audio track. Usually, three sets of tracks are sufficient for most home video editors, but if you ever need more, you can add as many as needed. Now, notice our resource window is empty. Let's start our video creation process by adding some of those cinematic masterpieces that you obtain via your cell phone or video camera. Do this by selecting the media room, media content, then click on import media button just above media content. You'll have two main choices, to import media files, or to import an entire media folder. Importing an entire media folder all at once comes in handy when you have gathered together ahead of time all of your video clips, pictures, and music files that you may want to use. Here I have selected three video clips 
which have a file extension of MTS, which is a very common file type used by many camcorders. Your files may be MOV, which is another similar type used by many cell phones and some camcorders. After selecting our three files, each of their file names appears below, so just click on Open. Now, all three files show in the resource window, and the preview window will also display whatever file is selected. Right-clicking on any of these files and selecting Properties will show important information about the video, such as the file size and the video format, the bit rate, the resolution, and the frame rate, the aspect ratio, and finally some information about the sound quality and format. Now let's get our creative juices flowing and begin the actual video creation process. Click and drag the first clip from the resource window and drag it down to the video track 1. Don't just drop it anywhere on the track but move it all of the way to the left at time 0. You may notice that the file on the timeline appears very small. There are two reasons for that. First, the video clip is very short and doesn't take up much time. And second, the timeline is zoomed out, so you, you are looking at a large segment of time. Let's fix this by clicking anywhere on the timeline number line and dragging to the right until a reasonable view of the clip can be seen. Notice that if any clip on the timeline is selected, it turns blue and also appears in the preview window above. Hitting the play button in the preview window will play that clip. Now let's click on the second clip in the resource window and drag that down to the timeline. Once again, don't just drop it anywhere, but move it over just to the right of the previous clip. Notice a thin blue line dropping down from the left side of clip 2 as you are moving it along the timeline. That indicates the beginning of that clip. Move it until it just touches the far right side of the previous clip. When you release it, the timeline playhead, the small white triangle thing, will change to a red line indicating its current position, which is exactly at the end of the first clip and the beginning of the second clip. You can drag the playhead through the timeline to any position you desire. If you hit the home key on your keyboard, it will return the playhead to the beginning of the currently selected clip and not necessarily to the home or starting position of the entire movie. You may have to manually move the playhead to accomplish that. Or, if none of the clips in the timeline are selected, and none of them are blue, then you can hit the home or stop button in the preview window, and the playhead will return to the starting position of the entire movie. Now you want to drag down clip 3. But if you notice that it may appear that there is no more room on the timeline to add the third clip because the second clip seems to extend all the way to the right. To solve that, we need to merely zoom the timeline out by clicking anywhere in the timeline and dragging it to the left a sufficient amount to zoom out and give room for the next clip. Click on that third clip in the resource window and drag it down to the timeline just to the right of the second clip. Here is a handy feature for automatically zooming the timeline just the right amount that will expose the exact length of your movie. Just above track 1 is a button when clicked will accomplish that. We now have all three clips on the timeline. If you hover your mouse cursor to the very end of the timeline, you should see that our video masterpiece is about 1 minute and 51 seconds long. We have now placed three different video clips on the timeline and we can produce one continuous movie from them. In order to create our movie, click on the blue button Produce at the top of the PowerDirector window. When the Produce window opens, you should see three main sections. Along the left side is the seemingly complicated choice of file type and video format. In the upper right is the large preview window. And along the bottom is the file name and path choices. Let's closely look at the section along the left side as this can be the most complicated. 
Along the very top are some small buttons. Normally you will be producing a standard 2D type of video. Below that are various file formats. The most commonly one will be the H264 AVC and perhaps the H265 HEVC. Both of these can produce an MP4 video file, but the H264 is the recommended choice for nearly universal compatibility. We're going to stick with the H264 AVC format. Your next choice is the file extension, which we will set as MP4. Under Profile Type, select Default, unless you have added your own special profiles, which would appear as custom. Under the Profile Name Quality button, there are multiple choices. This might be the most difficult setting for the beginners to understand. Click on the down arrow and you will see a list of the various resolutions, frames per second, and bit rates. If you recall, our original clips were 1920 by 1080. We could downsize these to 1280 by 720, but of course we want to stick with the larger resolution and same frame rate of 30 frames per second. Further down the list are profiles for 2K and 4K resolutions. You can experiment around with the super high resolutions. But unless you have a 4K computer monitor or 4K TV, upscaling the original video clips to this resolution will be of little help to you. Let's select the common and standard quality MPEG-4 1920x1080 at 30 frames per second in a bit rate of 16 megabits. We can click on the text looking icon to the right just to read the full properties of this format which also gives the audio properties. The last setting to check on is to make sure that things are set for NTSC which is the United States television standard. Viewers in Europe and other countries will want to double check to make sure that this is set properly for their country's TV standards. One final thing is to add the exact file name and location. PowerDirector always gives a default name of Produce, but we'll change ours to something more meaningful such as My First Video. There is nothing else necessary to change and we could click on the Start button. But just to the left of the Start button is the Enable Preview During Production button. I recommend you leave this box unchecked. Normally there is no reason to watch the video again at, as it is being produced and by turning off the preview. It becomes less taxing on your CPU in the graphics engine of your computer. As a result, your new video will render faster. The final thing is to click the start button. In the upper left is the progress bar. At the bottom right are some data about the drive's available room and estimated space needed and time remaining. Notice the preview window does not show the actual video. Because this was a very small video and you know only a matter of a few seconds, it is complete. In the upper right, it now says producing video complete. And there is a blue and white check mark, which presumably means everything checks out. Under the check mark are two buttons. We can go back to the edit page or we can open the file location and double check to see if the video file actually exists. Let's open the file location and check on the new movie file. A window opens and there in the correct folder is the new video file just created called myfirstvideo.mp4. When we go back to the produce window we can now click on back to edit. But notice that there's a new clip in the resource window. It is the movie that we just created. It does not have a green check mark in the upper right because that file was not actually used in the timeline like the other files, but rather is what the entire timeline just created. At this point, it is safe to exit PowerDirector, but notice that PowerDirector gives a warning that you have not created nor saved a project file. For the purposes of this demo, no project file was created as we kept things so very simple. But in the future, 
if you are editing multiple video clips, adding effects, adding music, and any other video effects, it is strongly suggested to create a project file. Just in case you get interrupted in the middle of your complicated editing, this saved project file will let you pick up the pieces the next day, for example. This prevents you from having to do things all over again. With PowerDirector now closed and the new movie created, you might have one other decision to make. In that regards, just what do you do with the three original video clips? Do you really need to keep them? You now have the full movie that you created, which shows all three clips, so wouldn't it be wise just to delete those original clips? But is that really a smart thing to do? My advice is that if you are a beginner at video editing, do not delete the original clips. You may find that a little later on that the new video that you just created has some type of hiccup in it. Or maybe it was produced in the wrong format or wrong resolution. Once you delete those three original clips, even a project record won't be able to help you go back and start over again. Keep all of your original clips until you get some experience in PowerDirector. Once you are confident that your finished movie is perfect, then you might feel confident that you can delete the clips. A lot depends upon how much disk storage space you have. Remember, video clips can take up a lot of space, especially if they are of a large resolution. The choice is yours. Coming up in the next video, let's edit out portions of a video clip that are not necessary, and let's add a title. Let's add some sound effects and background music, and let's try out a few special transitions to take us from one clip to another. In the meantime, hit that subscribe button, like this video, and leave me a comment.